Hello friends, Michael23B here, and welcome back to another video. Uh, today, I just wanted to do a bit of a follow-up to my previous video about the binary adder. And uh, this video won't be quite as long as my last one. Uh, but yeah, I actually have a whole new design here that's actually half as small as my original design. Uh, so I will show that off really quickly um, in just a bit. But first of all, I did have some things to address about my previous video that I didn't mention in it. And first of all, that is the actual definition of a carry cancel adder. So a carry cancel adder was actually invented and coined. Uh, the term was coined by Magical Gent. So uh, the way a carry cancel adder works is actually entirely based on the signal strength comparisons with the comparator. So you're comparing uh, the cancel line with the generate line. And if this is greater than the generate line, then there's no output. So uh, by definition, a carry cancel adder technically relies on signal strength, uh, but my design that I've been designing uh, is all based on pretty much the same exact logic, the same uh, table down there that I demonstrated. Uh, it's just that it doesn't use signal strength. So it still functions absolutely beautifully. And uh, yeah, so some other things to mention that I didn't mention in the previous video is why I actually have these bits two blocks apart. So if I actually you know, if I flip that, we don't get an output in the copper bulb. Uh, but someone asked why I didn't just place uh, the bits one block apart like this. So why can't I just place pistons one block apart? And you'll see we actually get an output there. So even though this observer is not facing uh, the wall that we're pushing, um, it's still changing no matter what we do with the piston. So I push it in like that uh, and the bulb changes. I push it out, the bulb changes again, and that's because uh, this observer is actually detecting this wall going from this low part. You can see there's a little bit of pixel space in between the next block and here. And so when we actually add this wall, you can see it changes to a taller version. And so unless we have the piston up here instead, oops. so unless we actually have this, uh, it's going to generate an output. So this is why we have to put it up here. Otherwise the observer will detect a change and we don't want that. We only want to detect a change, like we said, when the door is closed and we get a carry. And yeah, um, just something else really quick to mention that I didn't explicitly mention in the video. So if we place a block next to this wall, you can see that that wall actually changes and it changes downward, but the walls that are up from it so the walls that are higher than the block we placed don't change at all that is why we don't get an output above where we change the wall but we do get an output uh where we change the wall or below it so i change that uh, we get an output there but we don't get an output there because that's the way that's just the nature of wallstone it changes all the walls below it and not the ones above it so yeah so my entirely new design and it's actually not my design so we'll move on to this uh, this design was made by QLED my friend QLED from the cube crowd server uh, we've been talking in discord a bit and he was actually able to design uh, a great new uh, dustless adder based on the same concepts that mine one my one was um, but this is half as small so mine was about 10 by 4 and this one is five by three, so it's five blocks long, three blocks wide. And of course, if you include the levers, it's six blocks long, but still it's half as uh, half as big or half as small as my original design. So it's really compact. And uh, I'll just show you a demonstration real quick. It still takes 13 game ticks for an output uh, to output or less. But yeah, it just works really good. So you can see one plus one, we get a two. This is our output. So you have one zero, which is two in binary. We add, let's say another one. So we have three plus one, and that is four in binary. Uh, let's go ahead and flick a bunch of these levers. And we'll go ahead and add an output or add another one to the addition here. You can see it all changes and we get an output down here. So now we have 256. 
and we can do the same with the carry so here's our carry up here or carry in change that they all change and again we get 256 um, I'll just do one more example so let's go ahead and change these Let's uh, do 11, and we're going to do 11 plus 5. It just generates another carry down to there, and so 11 plus 5 equals 16. And so, once again, if you didn't watch the last video, um, you definitely should watch the last video. Uh, but the way that this design works is that the most significant bit is at the bottom, and the least significant bit is at the top. So that's just something important to mention. Um, if you didn't watch the last video, yeah, that's how it works. Uh, that's the nature of wallstone. Wallstone can only generate the carry downwards, like I said. And so, yeah, the least significant bit has to be at the top. So, like I said, this was made by a user by the name of Qlud, um, and he used some really clever tricks to accomplish it and compact it down into this five block space. Um, and so, yeah, this is how it works. We have an OR gate up here. So if either one of these levers is on, uh, this rail will turn on. Um, and so yeah, once one of these, or once this rail is on, this observer detects that. It goes out into this observer, and it triggers the bulb, which changes state. Um, and then the other thing that's happening is we have on the back here, we have a torch, uh, which is canceling this comparator. And so basically, this is our AND gate. So if we have nothing on, none of the inputs are on, uh, and we don't get an output in this repeater. So if we turn this one on, we still don't get an output because we're canceling that comparator. Um, and then if we have both on, then that torch turns off and it allows the signal to pass through here. And same if this is off, we still don't get an output because uh, this lever is not on. But yeah, once we get an output, that's our AND gate output, it goes into the note block. Uh, we have an observer detecting the change in that note block, um, and then another observer facing that, which goes into our output. And so, yeah, technically, that is the essence of our XOR gate. So if we have an input that's turned on, we want to turn on the bulb. Um, and we have, if we have an AND gate that has an output, we want to trigger the bulb again to turn off. So that is basically the XOR of our output. Um, but of course, we also have to do the carry tower, so what happens with the carry tower is that if we have an AND output, if we have both of these inputs turned on, uh, then this trap door also closes, it closes up against the wall, and it propagates that carry down the wall, down to this observer, and this observer goes out to here, and it triggers the next bolt, the next, the next significant bolt. Um, and that is our output. Of course, the other thing we also have is that the OR gate, so if either one of these inputs is on, we detect that from the rail, that goes into the observer, and it also triggers the piston right here. So not only does that trigger the bulb, uh, it triggers the piston, which pushes the wall into place, and that allows a carry to happen. Um, say we had a carry up here. So yeah, um, that is being XORed with the uh, output down here. So yeah, that is basically the gist of how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and freeze the game so nothing will happen if I flick this lever. So I'm going to turn that on. And then what I'm going to do is just take a step forward, one game tick, and continue doing that. So you can see we get the piston. That pushes out the wall, uh, which allows a carry to happen. But again, it doesn't force a carry to happen. And yeah, that's enough. We have an output to here. Um, because the observer detected that rail and it ticked that bulb. Um, and then if I also flick, say, this lever, you see, and I'll, I guess I'll do two ticks this time, so you'll see that goes into here, and we just heard an output in the uh, trap door that changed the state of this entire wall, which goes into this observer. I'll tick step forward more, and another and another, and you'll see we get an output into this copper bulb. And also this one changed uh, because we got an output from the AND gate, and that turned it back off. Uh, and you'll see that 2 plus 2 is 4. So yeah, that's basically how the entire thing works. Uh, much more compact. 
And uh, yeah, I will now show you a tutorial. So you'll see this is actually one slice right here. So each uh, layer, each significant bit takes up three blocks. Um, and yeah, this can be repeated infinitely. So it's infinitely expandable. You can do, um, just like my original, you can do eight bits, you can do 16 bits, you can do 64 bits, or you can even do 128 bits. Um, so there's no limit. The redstone dust, um, since there's no redstone dust, there's no limit to how far you can go with this. Um, but again, uh, the, the pros obviously of this is that you can go as far as you want. Um, but of course the cons are still that it is state based. It's based on where the wall is and less if you, uh, spam the inputs, you're still going to have problems. You're going to break the machine if you spam the inputs. Uh, but something else to mention is that this actually can support simultaneous inputs. So if you look over here, we have a torch uh, going into this comparator, canceling that comparator until um, you know we get no output unless both the inputs are on. Uh, but yeah, that torch, that torch uh, makes it so that this is actually four game ticks behind the other one. So um, something about this is actually that all the right bits, all the right side bits are four game ticks. They take four game ticks longer uh, to be input into the system. Uh, but ultimately, the entire output still um, generates an answer in 13 game ticks, and it's all synchronous. It's all synchronized. They all output at the same time. Uh, but yeah, basically, what, what we have here is a built-in uh, device to allow a simultaneous input. So what I'm going to do here is actually I'm going to connect these up so that we can input both of these inputs at the same exact time. And so what we'll have is 1 plus 1 and that will make a two. So I'll go ahead and flick that. And you'll see, we actually do get an output up here, but then it changes quickly back to the other one. Uh, so technically what we're still doing is we're inputting the first bit into the device. It's calculating that. Uh, and then we're inputting the other bit into the device and it's calculating that after that, which gives us the one plus one equals two. Uh, but yeah, this, thing over here forces the all the right bits to be four game ticks or two redstone ticks uh, behind this one. Uh, but yeah, it still generates an answer in just 13 game ticks, so that's exactly the same as my original design. And it's all synchronized, all the outputs uh, generate an answer at the same exact time. And uh, yeah, we can go ahead, change this back, and that changes it back to zero. Okay, and just as a fun little uh, side thing here. I'm going to go ahead and try to input uh, three bits at the same time. So we're going to do uh, one plus one, or actually we're going to do uh, both the one, the first significant bit, and the second significant bit at the same time. So we're actually going to do uh, three plus one uh, all at the same time. So we're going to flick that, and three plus one equals four, and we get the correct answer. So we can do simultaneous inputs uh, on both bits and uh, also on uh, multiple significant bits. Um, the only problem is this doesn't work perfectly because if we try to do um, both bits on both the levels, uh, so this would be three plus three, and that should be six, and we don't get six. So it doesn't work perfectly. What we're getting here is actually four, uh, and it should be six, so this light should also be on, uh, but it's not. So. Um, multiple, uh, multiple inputs at the same time on multiple different levels doesn't quite work. Uh, so I recommend you don't, you just don't try and attempt that. Um, like I said, it also goes along with the spamming inputs. You can break it, uh, if you spam inputs, but, uh, simultaneous inputs sort of work. So it works better than my old design. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to the tutorial. Okay, so we're going to start out with these two blocks and a wall in between them. And we are going to go up several blocks. Just do it like this. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and grab our walls. So let's grab the wall. And we're gonna go up several blocks. And uh, it's important to note that each level, uh, it takes three blocks. So if you're doing something like eight bits, uh, that's gonna be 24 blocks. So however many bits that you're going to do, you're going to multiply it uh, by three. Uh, and so, yeah, so for here, we're going to do three bits and we're going to do nine blocks tall. 
Uh, and so we're gonna place an observer right there and we're gonna break them up by two blocks each. So just have two blocks in between them all. And we'll place another wall there. Um, and then we're going to break these walls. So it's important to have a two block gap in between each one. So two walls in between each hole that we have. Uh, and then we're going to go out four blocks like this. So this is one, two, three, and four. And then go up another block and go like this. Let's grab our lever. And then we're going to go out here, like here, make a shape like this. And then we'll place our powered rails and go ahead and place an observer going into that powered rail and, an, and another observer. And then we'll place a block here and a torch and a repeater. Uh, and then place a comparator and it's important to put that on subtract mode and then place another repeater and place a note block uh, and we'll also want to place an observer here and break this block uh, put a copper bulb here and then just put the comparator back and put it on subtract mode um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to place an observer going out of the note block and another observer going this way into a solid block and then into a copper bulb um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and place a solid block there grab your sticky piston and place that uh, let's grab the walls here and place a wall there so that the piston is pushing that wall into the gap place an iron trap door uh, and you can place it on the bottom or you can place it on the top uh, it's just important that it's facing into the wall like that uh, and then yeah that is pretty much one entire level uh, so we're just going to repeat that another time so I'm gonna place uh, another uh, input here and then two rails all right and once you've copied as many layers as you want you can see we have three bits here uh, just at the very top we're gonna place another observer going out of there a solid block and a copper bulb and then you're gonna place your final trap door for your carry in and you are completely done. So we have a carry-in of one, that's one, that's two, three, and so on. You get the idea. It all works, and uh, you are all done. So thank you guys very much for watching, and thanks again to QLED on the Cube Crowd server for uh, helping me design this. And yeah, uh, there will be a world download in the description, so you can check these out as well. So that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.